Before we begin this video, if you're somebody that's not good with words, if you're somebody that says the wrong thing at the wrong time consistently, if you're somebody that potentially has a little bit of Asperger-ish to your character, right? A little autism because autistic people sometimes have a tough time knowing when to say the right thing or the wrong thing, you know? If you're somebody that just isn't good with, with using your words, my recommendation wouldn't be to use like everything that I say here. My recommendation would be to just shut up. <laughs> just be quiet and let your silence create the mystery for you. All right? Because sometimes not everything is for the not everything is for everybody. With that being said, let's begin this. So how do we use words to play with a man's mind? All right? That's a topic that we're going to be talking about today. How does how do words play with a man's mind? So we're going to be talking about one, the origins of the power of words on our minds. Two, um, how to you um, the origin and then the how, and then after that we're going to have a reversal where when not to use this. All right. Like I said earlier, remember when I one one example that I made was that if you're not good with words, then it's better off to not say nothing and let that create your mystery. So that's the structure of this video today. All right. So look, essentially, what you guys have to understand is words are used to stimulate your fantasies. All right. That's pretty much the whole point of using words. Why? Because before words, humans had to focus deeper to communicate with each other. Right, because words allow you to just not really pay much attention. But before we had the ability to use words, we had to notice and focus on people's nonverbal a lot deeper, and that takes up more brain energy. But now, in the society that we live in today, we have not, we don't have to use too much, too much energy to communicate. Because we have other means. We have our fingers. We could text. We can make videos. We don't have to really pay attention. We don't have to really use extreme um, nonverbal communication to express how we feel. You, Because humans and the human brain likes to save energy. So rather than observing the nonverbal, which takes up a lot of energy, you become efficient over time. It's easier to focus on words. Um, and then to notice deeper things like actions and nonverbals. It's easier to focus on words and then use those words to begin to have an active imagination. So what, what, what is the source of this focus on words? Where does that come from? You see, we use words to folk, to express our ideas. That's how we commonly use words. We use it the wrong way for the most part. Um, we can use words... We can't use the same words we use in normal life amongst each other. And this, we can't use the same words in seduction. They just don't go together. In real life, you learn to communicate in literal ways. In seduction, we use words differently, right? The, because the key to so the, the way that we use words differently is not that we, say, well, we, that we say something different or that we speak differently. We just, we just have a different perspective on the usefulness of words per se right because it's not what you say is what you don't say as well you see you you want to see words as music right and music and noise there is music and then there is noise music we love to hear noise we do not like to hear and the difference between music and, and, and noise when it comes to speaking is that we is that a seducer uses words that please uses words to make people happy and hopeful. They don't use words to debate or to argue or anything like that or to make people defensive, right? We use words for promises, for flattery, right? We must see seductive words aimed, and we, we must use words specifically aimed at a person's amygdala, their emotional brain, not to the rational part of their brain. We don't use words for rationality. We use words to inspire emotions for the most part, right? Their core emotions. It's, 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 and so rather than thinking of words as something to use to say the truth per se, right? We want to use words to intoxicate, to confuse, right? To lure, to seduce, to root out reason and introduce the irrational. Because then when you do that, that's when you get their attention. 
that's when begin when people begin to focus on you and to fall in love with you as a leader or as a partner. So that's what we want to do. We want to introduce them to the irrational. So how do words affect the mind, right? How is it that words affect the mind? You see, words paint an image. You think of words as like a as like a paintbrush and the mind as a as as the canvas, right? We use words to control people's imagination. You must have a deep sense of to believe as children, right? Um, and they seek believing in something, anything. Why? Because we have our frontal cortex that has believed in something for hundreds of thousands of years. You see, animals don't believe in fucking don't need to don't have a need to believe but because we have our frontal cortex which pretty much functions in in creating fiction what doesn't exist religion thinking of inventions thinking of going places you never been before imagining things you never imagined that is that is what makes our minds so unique right and so we we um we we have had this this hardware for hundreds of thousands of years and so Evolutionarily speaking, even though it hasn't been that long, that much, we we still have we have a deep sense of to believe in something because of that, for the most part, because that's the only part of our brain that believes in something that doesn't exist, right? And let, let me give you an example of of this deep need to believe in something and how how it is a human weakness which we could use to capitalize on our victims per se which we will talk about how to use it right it's just an introduction imagine a dad telling his son a promise and looking at his son deep in the eye and saying and saying hey little tyrone i'm kidding <laughs> little timmy i promise i'll be back from the grocery store later on okay and little timmy's like okay dad I i'll wait for you here and he's like yeah Turn around and, 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 and don't look back. I'll be back. All right? What happens is that that child is, he believes that promise. If you Imagine being a kid and seeing your dad promising you something, right? That promise, he holds on to it. He practically immerses himself in that reality and holds on to those words. And as a result, that child will wait. That child will have almost like a form of self-discipline because he, there's a reward at the end of that tunnel. And so children have to have that belief in their parents. It's deeply ingrained to believe everything that, that, that their parents say because it's for their survival. And so people, whenever you promise them something, whenever you, whenever you play on their imagination with words, they will regress as a child. They will be more compliant to you, you know, and they will believe in and imagine in what you're promising. And that's why we got to learn how to say the right things. So it's deeply ingrained in people. It's part of human nature, right? And so now that we understand that it comes from our childhood lack of dependency or, or, or it comes from our insecurities to trust in someone, to believe in someone, or, or else we have the sensation that we'll die, we could then start to use words to create images. You see, words create images in people's mind. And what we imagine is what creates our expectations, right? And promises for good because anytime somebody promises you anything or any anytime you expect something emotionally you usually are imagining in your mind right imagine i tell you let's go to a party tomorrow all of a sudden you're imagining being in the party and then i tell you never mind we're not going to go to the party all of a sudden you're mad that this image is not going to happen because there was any there was emotions linked to the image in fact depending on how intense the emotion is how intense that vivid vision is in your mind and why is that? Because emotions are linked, because imagination is linked to emotion. Emotions is what makes people move. In fact, emotions are impulses to act based on what life throws at you. The Latin word for emotion means to move, essentially, right? Emotions come from, the, yeah, exactly, right? Our emotional self, which is our, our, the part of our limbic system, our amygdala, um, is our irrational self and that part of ourself is extremely pleasurable because it reverts us back to our ancient roots it reverts us back to our childhood right Ch children are the most animalistic versions of humans adult humans are pretty much domesticated humans who have learned to disguise their animal nature to fit in 
So this irrational self, which is so addictive, and anybody who brings out the irrational self, we will follow. It comes out in different ways. It comes out in groups, activities. It comes out through drugs. And it comes through a belief system. These three things bring out the irrational. Get that part out of them, and they will yearn to let go of the adult exterior. So let's talk about, not that we understand, the root of, and why words have such a, has such an impact in the, on active imagination and our, and our emotion and how words affect how we believe and, and who we follow, who we fall in love with, right? And, and how it's part of our DNA to believe in words. Let's talk about how to use words to control a person. By the way, if you're enjoying this type of video, you should check out my more in-depth course which is called Natural Chemistry. It's a course that I made. It's a five-week course specifically made for women who are in relationships and who want to master the art of a relationship, who want, who want to understand men. Each part of this course is specifically made to improve whatever relationship you have. All right? It's a five-week course, 30-day money, money back guaranteed. It's only for women who are in relationships. And this one is for women who are single. It's called The Psychological Game of Attraction. It's a course that I made that would take you through the first three months of a relationship. And I split it up in three areas. The pre-honeymoon phase, the honeymoon phase, and the post-honeymoon phase. Every single one of you guys who are talking to somebody is in one of those phases. And so it's almost like getting coached by me quick and straight to the point and both courses start off at 97 dollars, and they all have a 30-day money back guarantee so if you don't like it you could just get your money back in fact you could try it out for free there's free videos if you click on the description down below where it says purchase the course all right let's get back to our normal program so let's talk about the how how to use words um to play with a man's mind before anything Okay, remember, words are not meant for truth. Words are meant to confuse, to lure, to seduce, to stimulate, to frustrate. All right, understand that. Now, we're not lying to people about cheating, about being single, and stuff like that. That's not what we're lying about. What we're doing, we're pretty much setting the table to say anything that we want without coming across as needy. That's very important. So make sure that you declare that you're not looking for something too serious. Cloak your action and veil and mystery. Remember, the keys to confusion. The reason why is this. Imagine that a guy tells you he's not looking for a relationship. Or vice versa, a woman telling you that, right? And then they give you a flower. What's that going to do to you? What are you going to say? What does this mean? Okay. You're going you're gonna to take it almost like a friendly gesture, but you're also going to say, what does this mean? As opposed to imagine he gives you a flower and in the past, this person told you that they like you and then they give you a flower. What are you going to know? You're going to know what that means. You're going to say, oh, this person really likes me. But when you say you're not looking for nothing serious or even has expressed that, that you're leaving in a week or so as an example, and they give you a flower, you're going to wonder what is that. You're going to you're going to look deeper into that. That's the point of saying this. It's not to it's, 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 it's not to make people think that you don't want them. It's to. Give is to, it's pretty much to, to, to allow them to feel that confusion, to allow them to feel that irrationality. It is pleasurable, people. You guys have to understand that. And so that's why I never want you to declare your feelings early on. It's irritating and it's a sign of insecurity. And you're pretty much popping the bubble. You're being selfish. You're being selfish. You just want to say what the hell is in your mind. That's all you really want to do. You just want to take, you see, most people just want to blabber mouth. That's all they want to do. They don't really think before they speak because they don't want to, because it's, 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 it's a lot of work to think before you speak, right? And so what, and so what they want to do is just speak their minds and hope for the better. That's not a real strategist, right? In the early, in the early, um, in the early stages of seduction, what you want to do is keep your words as simple as possible. Keep your words simple. Stay short and succinct. They'll tune out the banal words and begin to fantasize about you. Keep it as simple as possible. By keeping things simple and friendly, you learn valuable information about them. Don't talk about deep topics like sex or nothing like that. Just keep it like a casual, friendly conversation, right? 
because when you keep things casual and you and you give the person a look as you're talking casual it'll pop out like a sore thumb right it's almost like if you talk if you're talking about if you're talking about like an, as an example let's say you're an accountant and you're like yeah i'm an accountant and yeah it's <laughs> it's boring it's boring work but I, I do like it you know because it allows me to do anything that i want right keeping things simple but then sometimes giving them a certain look from time to time i know that, i know that was a cycle look is what makes them it makes it makes people wonder and say what was that look about that's what you want right you, you're using words keeping it simple but with looks you're keeping it intense right that's an example of that they think um, and, and also by keeping things simple, letting the person talk about their lives and not you and not you talking too much, what you could do is that you get them to reveal things about themselves, right? Let me keep, let me read the notes because I have a lot of notes that I need to get through. Um, they reveal their weaknesses, their childhood yearnings. Secondly, by keeping it simple, they get to spend time with you and get comfortable. They think you like them. That's why I prefer going the friend route at first, for the most part, even though some guys might not agree with me. And the reason why is because when you make them friends first, you, you it doesn't really pop the bubble, right? If you treat them as a friend, even though they, they like you and you know they like you, you're putting them almost like in a torture chamber in a good way, people. It's a good kind of suffering, the good type of pain, right? You you put them there and, and it's almost like, they love the pain. It's like, oh my God, I cannot wait. Does he like me? Does he not like me? Does she like me? Does she not like me? What does that look? What does that mean? And they go home and they're ruminating what you said. Everything is intense when you put them in that zone. Friend zone, I guess, right? Um, they they think you like them for, for who they are. And then one day you give them an offhand, an offhand, an offhand comment. An offhand comment could be that you say, oh my God, me and you will be perfect for a relationship. But we're too different. Anyways, and you just change the topic, right? That's an offhand comment. You were, you guys were polite. You guys had a friendly banter. This person thinks you just want to be friends. And you're like, oh, man, I like this person. Like, you know that they like you, right? And so you give the impression that you guys are friendly. And then one day, you say a comment. Oh, my God, me and you will make some really good looking kids. And then you change the topic. Almost like you're complimenting that you guys are good looking. You're like, man, we're pretty, we're both pretty good looking. Anyways, and, and then you just change the topic, right? Or saying something like that, oh, me and you would never work out. And then just change the topic, right? You, you could be playful, like saying, look at them, like, look at them fighting, man. It'll be like us. Me and you would never work out. We'll be fighting the whole time, right? And then you change the topic, right? That offhand comment makes them say, what, what, what? Like, is he seeing me like that? Is this person seeing me like they like me? Like, is that, what, what does that mean, right? That, that's, that's the power of words right there. Other things that you could do while you're getting to know them is befriend their friends and say good things about your your target behind their back so that they can hear about that from them, right? It's almost like you say, oh, yeah, this person that I'm seeing, like, let's just say you're talking to fucking fulina de, fulana de ta, right? And then you're like, oh, man, fulana de ta, yo, she is so interesting. And then what that friend would do naturally is relay it back to her, right? Now, that will have a much better impact rather than you telling her how awesome she is. Hearing, he, he, hearing that you are talking good about her or him is a flattering type of thing, right? Or um, another example that you could use is at first, you see, when you, make, you, when you get into know somebody, you have, a lot of, you have a lot of leeway to make mistakes, right? Because they don't know you yet. And some of the best things that you could do is broken promises at first. Now, not the type of broken promises that are too intense. Mm -mm. Broken promises, because as children, everyone feels pain as somebody breaking the promise. Now, the early, when it comes to relationships and, 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 and um, to relationships, there's a certain pain that you feel when somebody breaks a promise. But there's also, there's also a certain sense of forgiveness that you feel obligated to do, especially at first, if you like them, right? So it could be that you say, "Oh yeah, let's say, um, I'll text you when you get home." As an example, and they don't text you when they and and the, and 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 that person doesn't text you when they get home. It's a broken promise, but it's not so big that you could get mad that you could call them out on it. But it's still big enough for you to feel that pain, right? And that's the point. 
You want them to say, why didn't they text me back? They told me that they were going to text me. What's going on? Does this person not like me? Did I do something? And all of a sudden, what they'll do is that sometimes they'll even text you because those words are ruminating inside of them. So what you could do is breaking promises, people. As fucked up as it is, um, and seeing the reaction will tell you a lot about how they feel about you. After, so that's one thing, right? So once you notice that this person likes you, you can say stuff like this, right? Don't include them in the future. I had a girl who was going to be a doctor, and she would talk about moving to California because she was going to be a doctor, and I lived in New York City, and every time she mentioned it, it hurt because I was like, bitch, don't you know I'm going to be here? What the fuck? Like, why are you so happy about going to California? What the fuck? Right? That type of stuff. Talking about plans that doesn't include them in the future. Not saying, I'm going to California and you're not going to be there. No. She's just going to be like, oh, I cannot wait to go to California. That's going to be so much fun. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, bitch. Hope you don't go. <laughs> Hope you fail that test. Right? <laughs> right? Don't include them in the future. Let him complain about it. And if, he's, if he complains about it, you're like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll work it out. Talk about potential futures. Right? And also talking talking about futures with, with with him. Just say, oh, I cannot wait for for us to go here, or or we should do this, we should do that, we we should visit this city, we should go to California, we should go on vacation. And you know what? I'm gonna take you on vacation, stuff like that, right? Because then, when what you want to do is have moments where you don't include them in the future, and have moments where you include them in the future, so that they can fantasize being with you. An example was like I remember I was dating this girl. And I told her, oh, yeah, we should go to we should go to New York City. No, we should go to Mexico one day. She was like, yeah, let's do that. Right. And I didn't take her to Mexico. And she told me that she resented that. (laughs) Right. And she told me that she kept thinking about that. And she and that she really hated the fact that I told her and that didn't follow through. Humans don't like broken promises once they know them, once they know you for a while and they could expect and, and they feel like they can expect um, things from you, they don't like you breaking promises. And a lot of times, even though they don't like you breaking promises, that don't mean they're going to leave. They're not going to leave, but they don't like the fact that you broke those promises. You want to use that to your advantage for the most part. Um, because that frustration will not make them leave. That frustration will make them force you to keep your promises. So that means that they'll be following up, they'll be chasing you more, texting you more, thinking about you more, making sure that you don't fuck up next time because their ego is at stake. <laughs> flattery, right? We're going to talk about flattery. And I have a video that explains flattery flattery the best. But before, the, before we put that video, flattery is all about, is the purest form of seduction, all right? And the reason why f- flattery is a, is a purest form of seduction it's because it targets it it, it it it's it's not said to them is targeted for them flattery it's specific a specific type of 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 words that's specific to that person because it targets their weakness insecurities vanity and self esteem all right and compliments is a high form of flattery that if you don't know how to do it right you're pretty much setting yourself up for failure. So let's talk about how to do it properly. Flattery and compliments are not made to express how you think and feel about the person, all right? But to create an effect on the man. Flattery is not about expressing yourself because sometimes there's nothing There's nothing flattering about a person. Trust me, there's been some people that I'm like, there's nothing flattering about you. But it's all about trying to get an effect on them. All right. So, and the thing is that you also have to learn how to direct your compliments at a person's insecurity. Don't, for example, let's say, let's say, let, from from a man's perspective, I always tell guys, guys, don't compliment a woman on what she was born with. Compliment a woman on what she worked for. For example, um, let's say the woman's a beautiful person, right? She's beautiful. She gets compliments. She she gets validated of her beauty every single time on Instagram, on Facebook, by me. I mean, like she's gonna get it. So a guy complimenting her on um, her beauty makes no difference. Actually, it may even backfire. Now let's use it from the guy's perspective. Let's say the guy that you're talking to is a great basketball player. Complimenting him on his game will do little effect because he already knows that he's good and he gets it all the time. You know, there's no lack of self-esteem in his game, so he's not looking for any self-esteem. 
And again, once again, it may even accomplish the opposite effect as though, as though you're trying to flatter him. You see? So, but let's say that the guy is a basketball player, but also he's a writer. Not a good writer, but an aspiring writer. And he knows there are better writers out there. Comp- he, he, and because he knows there are better writers out there, they get paid for that. Complimenting him on something that he's not that secure about will go a lot further than complimenting him on his game. You see, so it's kind of similar with a girl, a hot girl. She's hot, but let's say this hot girl is very intelligent. You see, complimenting her on her intellect will have a deeper effect than complimenting her on her on her looks simply because she gets validated. But let's say the opposite way. Let's say the woman is hot. I mean, let's say the woman is very intelligent, but not hot. Complimenting her on try, on the beauty that she that you're trying to complimenting her on her beauty, even though she it may not be there, but telling her that she's beautiful will help. You see, so. Realize that if the guy is a writer and is not good and he has an ambition towards writing, flatter him on his artistic ambition will have a greater effect. Okay, and be, because that's part of his ego, that's part of that's part of that's a part of himself that needs self-esteem. So what's gonna happen is that he's gonna begin to see you as a source of self-esteem because you already validated him and and, and, and validated him on the, on specifically on the parts of his ego that's weak gets to the guy's head. It's a lot easier. And and I'm telling you, like, if someone compliments me on the right thing, on the things that I know I'm not good at, it gets to me in a good way, you know? Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. But the thing is that in order for that to work, it needs to be, like, surprise. Like, it needs to be spontaneous. It cannot be like, all right, let me make the flattery right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it has to feel like as though it's a surprise. And it has to be something that nobody has thought of. So in a way, you have to be really, really be listening to the person. You have to be proactively looking for the things that they are insecure about. See, you have to be looking for that because because we if you don't if, if you don't look past the surface level past the surface level of of, of men, you're never you're never really gonna get to know them. So you have to look deeper than that. All right? So it's that simple. Like just find through talking with him, find find about talk about his dreams, talk about the things that he wants, talk about the things that he's not good at, but that he enjoys doing, and then find ways to compliment him according to his needs. You're like a doctor, a doctor of flattery, a doctor of seduction. So the next thing is competitive statements. So what you could do is disqualify him. Competitive statements are pretty much statements that you use to put a man in a sexually competitive state. So let's talk about how to do it. One, disqualifying him. If he's a, and again, these things work because humans humans are ego driven, and the way that the ego works is through comparisons and differences. And humans have a deep need to compete. As children, we even compete with our with our siblings. We are competitive creatures, right? Especially when somebody wants the source that we want, like our parents, and so we we compete with our siblings for their attention. So disqualifying him is looking for something that is the opposite of him or the opposite of what he what he could ever achieve. So a perfect example is like race, right? As an example, if he's a white guy, you could talk about how you dated a black guy, <laughs> right? You can insinuate it. You can even have a picture with a random black guy, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. If he's a, if he's a skinny guy, you could talk about how one of your favorite celebrities is a, is a big guy, right? And vice versa. Or even. You know how I told you, tell him that you're not looking for a relationship, right? Tell him how your last boyfriend you loved and that you wanted to be in a relationship with him, but he didn't want you, right? And how you deeply wanted to be in a, in a relationship with him because this is what he's going to say. He's going he's gonna to say, bitch, what the fuck? Then why don't you want a relationship with me? Why are you so, why did you say that? Say that you wanted a relationship from the first date, because then he's gonna compare himself. He's gonna say, "Why me? Why? Like, what the hell? Like, why doesn't she? Why doesn't she want the same thing with me?" Right? That's one thing. Um, telling you could also tell him how you deeply loved someone and deeply wanted a relationship with the guy. Right? Because then he's gonna say, "Why aren't you treating me the same way?" He's gonna say, "Wow, so there's another level to your love that I'm not seeing." First of all. This type of thing will just make a guy go crazy for you. You got to be careful with this. It's almost like qualifying, complimenting you guys. For example, the most powerful words, the most powerful thing that I that has ever been used on me that actually worked and that actually made me 
go from kind from liking the girl to loving her was this she, and like i said she was already acting distant so it caught you have to have a little bit of distance you have to be a little cold with the person that's just a fact because you can use this if you're some if he thinks you're fucking psycho and you say this that's gonna turn him off and that's how you look at him one day and you're like hmm man we will make some really good looking kids wow all right and then change the topic and the reason why you say that is because you're implanting the idea of being in a relationship, of having kids together, and then changing the topic. And then maybe you bring it up another two or three weeks from now, you bring it up. And I prefer you say that after sex, right? Because his hormones are moving in his body a little bit more, oxytocin. And what's that, what that does is that he imagines it. I'm not kidding. If he kind of likes you and you say that and you bring a little cold, he's going to imagine that. And as soon as a guy imagines a kid with you, people, you could almost call that a checkmate. I mean, seriously, you could almost, you could call, you could call this, you could say that this is, this is like a fatality. It's like a, it's like, it's like a fatality. Like, that's how you end the game right there. All right. And it's actually one of the most powerful things you can say to a guy. Seriously. So, other things that you could use outside of competitive statements. And this is very important. Is when, when you're speaking to people, this is the most important part about this, is focusing on them when you're speaking to people. Learn to tell people what they want to hear. Learn to, when you're talking to people, ask, find out, try to understand what would they want to hear. Try to understand what they believe in and say it back to them, especially in the beginning. And the reason why is this. I remember I was listening to a political debate and they were talking about how... Um, they were talking about male, um, what is a woman, right, as an example. And the debater who was pro-conservative, no, who was, who was explaining that a woman is not a, a, um, just a human female, he was, at first, before disagreeing, he pretty much said everything that he agreed with on the other side. And he was like, of course, I mean, you know, it's obvious that a woman is a female, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, exactly. This guy, even though he's on the other side, this guy is really, he, this guy understands the physiology of it. But then he was a, when we're talking about what a woman is, we're talking about more of a feeling. And we understand that it gets conflated and it seems like we're not into science, blah, 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 blah. But the reason why I started agreeing with him, even though I, I, even though I realized I didn't agree with him like afterwards, but in the moment I agreed with him, the reason why was because he said things that I agree with in the, from the start. From the start, he started saying things that I agree with. And then he slowly started, started saying things that I disagree with. And because I already had a momentum of agreeing with him, I sort of cloaked everything he said that I disagree with with a little bit of more agreeableness, if that makes any sense. It's almost like a, you know, the yes ladder, that if you get people to say yes a lot, they'll end up saying yes to something that they usually wouldn't say yes to because you have created compliance. It's the same thing. You create mental compliance. So you find out what do they love to talk about? What are their belief system? And go in that direction. And with every person, you should have a completely different conversation. It should be completely different. You should be focusing on the completely different topics. Because if you know, one of the signs that you're, self, that you're self-consumed is if you keep talking about the same topics with the same per, with, with different people. That just means you're putting, your converse, you're putting yourself in front before the other person. So you want to find out what is the one thing that they talk about that they, they, they can't shut up about. Find that out. What is the one thing that they love the most that, that, it, that, that nobody shares with them? Find that out and talk about it. Where would they like to go? What makes them unique? What are their weaknesses? How are, and also find out when you're talking to people, find out the relationships between people. If they bring up their cousins, find out do you, got, do you get along with your cousins? If they bring up their best friends, find out do you, do, um, how, how, do you, how do you get along with your best friends? Have you guys ever had a fight? Find out the relationships between his life. Say so if he talks about basketball for me and art, ask him what do you like the most? Art or basketball? And I'm like, huh, interesting. Or if, if an example, if you ask me what do you like to do? I'm a, I like art. And, and you're like, oh, okay, so why did you get into art i could promise you i'm not even gonna ask why aren't you talking about yourself i'm gonna keep, i'm gonna just keep fucking talking oh i started doing art because i read a book about leonardo da vinci and blah blah blah, blah. and you and then and then if you're smart you're not gonna say oh i love art if you're smart you're gonna say why why leonardo why not other artists what makes him so unique and i'm like 
<laughs> All right, I'll tell you why. Um, okay, Leonardo is just a fucking genius, man. That's why I like Obato. Let me tell you how I got into him, and I'll keep talking. And what's going on is that as I'm talking, emotions are just, are stirred inside of me. And if you're a good listener, you're gonna be like, "Oh my god, holy shit, this guy's a fucking genius." Can you tell me more about it? Oh my god, that's crazy. Show me some of his paintings. I'm like, oh, okay. Let me show you some of his. Let me show you. Look, look at this one, right? And you're like, oh, so so what makes what makes this different from any other artist in his time? And then I'll tell you his technique. And if you just keep focusing on me, I'm not gonna notice that I, you're not talking about yourself. I'm not gonna notice it. And the whole point of all of this is for me to leave like I'm the smartest person. A good listener leaves and and the person feels like you were a smart person and a great listener i leave and i feel like i am the most interesting person that's the goal you don't want to disagree with me you could disagree with me on, on on little topics find out the little topics you could disagree on but on the big topics agree right just just find a way to agree or, or even agree but then find or even disagree, but then focus more on what you agree with. But the whole point is that you want to enter their world and find out what they like, what they don't like, um, the, the relationship, why they like this and not that. Like, find out relationships. So, find out relationships. Do you get along with that person? Do you like, get along with that friend? Do you like him? How, do you like, how is him comp- different from him? How are your best friends different? Blah, 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 blah. All in casual conversation. But also find out what they um, about their past, their relationship with their parents, their relationship with their moms, dads, right? And as you're talking, make sure that you don't just focus on them. So, for example, if we were in the conversation about Da Vinci, and then you asked me about that, how I got into art, and and you have and you have nothing to say about art, you can say, oh wow, so you got into art because of Leonardo? That's pretty fucking cool. I got into science, or or I got into dancing because of fucking Michael Jackson, right? Just like that, because I, I read his biography and I got inspired by it, you know. But it's the same thing. But but I'm curious, how was your journey like? How 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 did that progress? Did you go to a school to learn? Did you even started practicing? How was it? Right, and then I tell you how it went. Blah 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 blah. blah. After two minutes of talking, then you be like, "Oh wow, that's kind of similar." Like I started going to a school, you know. But then I started noticing there was a lot of competition, right? And so, and so it's kind of like it was it was it was really difficult. But did, what was like some of the challenges of school? Did you notice that there were people better than you? Like how, how was that for you? Because that happened to me. And then I talk 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 talk. Right? You kind of what you want to do is that like you kind of want to guess what topics will get them talking the most. That's what you pretty much want to go and just go in that direction and just listen, right? When you make eye contact, look at them, but then every five seconds you look away, like quickly, just just look quickly look away as they're talking. Interesting. Oh, right. And when they say something, if I, if I say, yeah, Leonardo was just just a crazy genius, and then you want to say what I said, but in your words. Damn. I mean. This dude was an animal of a genius, man. I mean, I couldn't believe someone like that existed. What you want to do is guess how do I feel about what I just said. And say, and, and in your mind, you want to be like, okay, so he said Leonardo was such a genius. What else might he think? Man, Leonardo, it's, it's crazy. He, he, just, he just blew the competition. Like, how the hell was he able to just discover so many things? And, and then I'm like, that's exactly, and then I'll say, that's exactly what I say. It's, it's kind of crazy. And then it's almost like you'll give me the sensation that you see the world the way I see it. And that sensation will create a connection. And if you just keep going deeper into that, my God, this person is going to feel so understood, so flattered, so like a star that they're just going to want to see you again. Even if they don't find you attractive, the fact that you listen so fucking much, they may they want to see you again. So... Now that we understand about what to say, let's talk about what not, how not to use words. One, after you inflict pain. When you inflict pain, which we talk about how to inflict pain, go watch my video on how to inflict pain or anything that's pain related. In fact, let me show you why it's important to, to inflict pain. You see, the number one key to making a man fall in love with you is to inflict pain. If you don't learn how to inflict pain on the guy, he's never going to remember you. If you notice the people who you love the most, the people you, who you have the hardest time forgetting, usually they inflict the most pain. So how do you create the kind of pain that makes them have a hard time forgetting you? You could do that through preemptively breaking up with them. Maybe you see him after a month. 
things are great and you break up with him. You could do that by just disappearing for a whole day. You say, I miss you. And then in the next three days, you disappear. You come back and blame it on your kids or blame it on work. The point is, is that pain is what creates the attachment that makes a guy forget, never forget you. Think about it in your exes. That is what happens. Ladies, men love pain. And it's not because they, they, they prefer that, but that is what makes them chase. It's one thing what men say, it's another thing what men react to. Think about all of the past relationships you've ever had. The ones that you want to get back are the ones with the loose ends. Are the ones that they dumped you. Are the ones that, do, that they treated you like shit. And I'm not saying to treat people like shit, but to understand the soul behind that concept. Because when somebody treats you like shit, they make you lose your self-esteem. And then all of a sudden, the only way for you to feel that self-esteem again is for them to validate you once again. After you inflict pain, don't use words to calm insecurities. Don't say, baby, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to do that. Or and as, as an example, let's just say that we were supposed to meet and I canceled the date last minute. And you're pretty pissed off. I'm not going to apologize. I'm just going to do something. I'm going to make a bold move. I'm going to send you flowers. I'm going to go to your house and apologize, right? R rather than just do it over the phone. I'm going to send you a gift. I, I'll send you a screenshot of a reservation that I did of a very expensive place as an example. Or I'll cook something for you. Or, or I'll make you a gift or something like that. But let your action speak. At some point, when you break promises, you have to act. Um, don't text too much and learn to say less than necessary when getting to know someone, all right? That's, and that works in the previous section in terms of getting to know someone by letting them talk. Learn not to say much. Saying 15 words, it's much better to say 15 words rather than 30 words, all right? Rather than saying, rather than communicating a sentence in 40 words, communicate it in 20 words. It leaves room for the imagination. Always think about what they want to hear. Remember that. If, you, if you're not good at talking, then shut up. You could create some mystery with your silence. Never say I love you first. Always show your love through your actions. Always. Never flirt, obviously. Better to be ambiguous when you flirt. In fact, contradict yourself sometimes. Frustrate them rather than stimulating them. And one last thing I want you to know from Robert Greene. When you're trying to impress with words... The more you say, the more common you appear and the less, control, the less in control. Even if, you, even if you're saying something banal, it will seem original if you make it vague and open-ended. Powerful people impress and intimidate by saying less. And that's the power of words. Words have a power to create, an create a new reality, to make people act, to make them fall in love with you. All right? And when you use this properly you will have a magnetic effect on people that's unprecedented all right anyways it's a long video i hope i don't have to do a video about this anymore <laughs> and i'll see you guys in the next video all right ladies so finally i have released my second course for women which is natural chemistry this course is a five week course five week course where every week you're gonna get a new set of videos Based on, based on specific issues. The, this course is all about how to create and maintain the attraction in any man. This will help you create love. This will help you deepen the love with your man. This is not about manipulation. This is not about playing games. This is genuine, genuine, natural chemistry. No more short-term partners. No more being fooled. Why? Because I will reveal to you not only how to create attraction in the first week, but also how to understand male nature, how to understand their tricks, how to prevent from being too attached, signs that he's the wrong guy, signs that he's a narcissist, signs that he's a mama's boy, signs that he's an emotionally available guy, emotionally unavailable guy. We go over everything. We go over the third week, setting boundaries. We go over the third week, controlling your emotions, right? Setting boundaries, fourth week, fifth week, embracing your masculine and the feminine, right? And on top of that, I come, I have over 10 different bonuses, 10 different bonuses, my Lord have mercy, right? With, with a money back guarantee. The bonus are one, 
the natural chemistry, over 10 hours of content, right? The breakup formula, how to deal with a breakup, right? The connecting with your man, right? Establishing a life of abundance, social mastery, understanding your dark side, the goal setting seminar, which is about how to set and achieve goals, practical mastery that will teach you how to master anything. The laws of human nature. I will come that I have a book club for the laws of human nature with over four hours of content, right? The Transformational Seminar in a Pocket, which is my mindfulness seminar, and the Chase audiobook. This is a this originally is one thousand eight hundred dollars, but you get it starting at ninety seven dollars, ladies and gentlemen. Right, ninety seven dollars. We have different packages, but all of this starts at ninety seven dollars. And you know what? You can check it out for free if you want. Yeah, for all the freeloaders, I have free videos just for you free videos all right so you could just check it out for free and then you could get out nothing wrong with that all right so and on top of that it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee no questions asked that's right no questions asked i don't mind i just want you guys to check it out because i know when you take one look you're gonna want to buy it i can promise you just like my other course um the psychological the psychological game of attraction it was a hit you're gonna love this one this one is not about manipulation this is genuine natural chemistry order it now all right i'll see you guys inside peace out